Hey Audacious Church, how are you doing? My name is Rufaro. I am our young adults pastor based in our Manchester campus and it is my absolute joy, pleasure and privilege to be bringing today's devotion for you. I pray that I found you in good health and in good spirits. Um, we're continuing our community series of devotions and I want to share with you two verses from the same chapter. Uh, I'd encourage you to go away and read the full chapter. We're looking at 1 Corinthians 12 here. I'd encourage you to read from verse 12 all the way to verse 30, but I'm just going to read two verses, the first one being verse 12, and it says this. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Jesus Christ. That's the first verse. The second verse is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27, so we're still in the same chapter. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Heavenly Father, I want to pray that everybody who is listening to today's devotion or is indeed reading it um, comes to a point of revelation. I pray that would you use the words that you've given me to speak to their souls, to their spirits, to their hearts and to their minds. And I pray for their communities that they represent and that they're a part of. And that, Lord, would you, would you spark something today that's going to catapult them in whatever they're going on right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for, for praying with me. Uh, like I said, I'd encourage you to read that full chapter. I've just identified two key verses that I wanted to pay particular attention to and what how they relate to community. See, I believe, um, well, the scripture shows us, in fact, not just I believe, that we are all created as part of a living system. God has designed the church in a way that it was meant to function in harmony, all of its parts working together to produce an outcome. In our instance, that is life. Um, but it's, you know, it's not always the case. We see on the global scale with the capital C church, but equally in our local church, our audacious church, that sometimes there is disruption to harmony. Sometimes there's falling out. Sometimes things happen that the community that we're a part of maybe is is, is hurt or is, is broken in some way. Well, the question then has to be asked, how do we maintain that community or how do we restore that community? And I, having a scientific background myself, often think, okay, cool, where has God displayed this in the animal kingdom? And I, I thought, have we considered ants? That's right, ants. Stick with me, don't click away now. Ants, those small little insects, yes, the very ones that are pests at picnics or somehow find their way into your house uh, during summertime when it's too hot. I don't know how they do it, but they're always found there. They always find some crumbs, some juice that you left out. Ants, man, they're crazy. Um, but I, ants themselves operate and function within a living system, an interconnected system of parts operating to achieve a function for them. It's not to serve the queen and produce more of them of themselves and prosper their colony. But I think there are three things that I've identified from my observation of ants. And yes, I have sat and observed ants. Uh, there are three things that we can incorporate into our communities, our church communities, that are going to help to us do the same thing of you know, bring healing or sustain and maintain the community as God designed it in harmony. The first thing is communication. See, ants are the masters of communication through intricate dancing, you know, releasing of pheromones, which are just uh, chemical signals, I guess. Um, ants are able to communicate the presence of danger, potential new food sources, changes in their surroundings or environments, which lead them to make better, smarter decisions. And I actually think that that's the same for us. In our community, if we are in an open dialogue, it actually creates an environment where there is trust. It, it consolidates some of the relationships that we've had. In fact, I believe that um, good communication in, in a healthy space can actually bring clarity and healing where there's previously been, you know, um, misunderstanding. I think a measure of a healthy community is their ability to have difficult conversations in love and still stick together and still keep moving forward to their shared objective, which is for us, of course, is uh, to see Jesus Christ represented on the earth. And I think if communication is done well, it has the ability to bridge uh, cultural gaps. It has the ability to bring forth new ideas and bring everybody onto the same page. So communication is powerful. The second thing that I think we can learn from ants is cooperation. Now, in an, in an ant colony, I don't know if you know this, there are there's a differentiation between the types of ants that you find in them. Some ants are workers, some are soldiers, some are drones, and of course you have the queen. Each is responsible for their own duty, their own role, be it, you know, building more tunnels, defense and protection of 
the colony foraging for um, food sources or reproducing. Each ant has a job that serves the larger purpose of the colony. Soldiers don't need to worry about foraging, but they still, you know, eat. And equally, the um, builder ants who are creating tunnels, they can do that in the confidence and safety and knowing that they're protected. They don't need to worry about, you know, predators or whatever happening because they know that uh, the soldier ants are going to look after it. And again, the same thing in, in our communities. Communities require corporate cooperation. There is power in community. You often hear us saying this. And the truth is that in a thriving community that is working in unison, um, where no one exists in, in their own isolation, but really we are a family, we all assume roles. You do your thing, I do my thing, and it benefits one another. Service to Christ and service to um, the, the body of Christ. We too, therefore, can confidently serve the Lord, knowing that our bit counts for something. And then finally, I think ants live to serve, live to serve. Um, if you ever observed an ant colony, like I said, I don't know how many people have done that, but I've spent a significant amount of time, more than I care to admit, uh, watching ants. And they, uh, they care for each other. They serve one another and they serve their queen. You can often observe um, ants when a member of the colony has passed away. What some of the ants would do is they would drag their body out of the colony in order to prevent you know, disease and spread and keep the place tidy. But they'll not just go dump it somewhere, but they'll actually bury their dead. Now, I don't mean to anthropomorphize ants. They are still insects, but they, they have the concept of like one of our owners died. We need to care for them. Read into that as much as you will. Uh, but the same is also with the true with, with, the, with their queen ant. See, the ants, they bring her gifts. They bring her food to ensure that she's happy and healthy and able to continue producing many eggs so the colony survives. They all serve the common goal of serving each other and serving the queen for the colony's sustenance and maintenance. Again, I think we can adopt some thinking from this, that we in our community are called by God or commanded by God to serve and love our brothers and sisters. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, this time in verses 4 to 7, tells us what love is, that love is, you know, it's showing patience and kindness, forgiving one another's mistakes. You know, it's not being envious or quick to anger. It's not self-seeking, all these kind of things. It, it Love protects, love um, serves the vulnerable and love perseveres. That's what love is. And I think by um, obeying that commandment, we are in service of our King, King Jesus. So as we've seen there through um, that analogy of both the ant colony and the um, human body that, you know, um, 1 Corinthians 12 speaks of, all of nature is actually reflecting the splendor of God and his uh, intended design for harmony and unity. Um, I think if we can adopt these three things, our communities also can be life-giving places where we're all growing and benefiting together. If you're not part of a community, I urge you to go and find a small group, go and join a team. You can find those on any of our, or on our website or go heading to our social media pages as well. Uh, but I want to leave you with some thoughts before, before we head out very quickly. So some thoughts are, um, how can you begin to use your words to speak life into your community? Secondly, how can you begin to contribute to your community? What do you have on offer? Thirdly, what resources do you need that actually you can begin to use from your community? And then finally, how does your life reflect the love that you are commanded to serve other people with? God bless you, church. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a blessed day and we'll see you very soon. Bye.